Hi there. I'm sure by now you've heard about the blockchain and you've also heard a lot about Bitcoin. And while this may not be true for some of you, there are a lot of people who have no idea the difference between the two of them. And so today we're going to take a look at the blockchain and see exactly what the blockchain is, how it works, what it solves and how it can be used. Now a blockchain, like its name, is a chain of blocks that contain information. It was originally designed to timestamp digital documents to prevent tampering and backdating of information. So there are a couple things that you need to note about the blockchain. First of all, and most important, is that it's a distributed ledger system that is completely open to anyone and everybody. Once data is recorded in a blockchain, it becomes very difficult to control it or to change it. Now the data stored in the block depends on the type of blockchain. So for example, a Bitcoin block will contain transaction details of Bitcoin transactions. You can compare hashes to a fingerprint in the same way that no two fingerprints are the same. Every hash is unique. So it's also very easy to track every transaction based on this. Now, once a block is created, its hash is calculated and changing something in that block will also change the hash. So now that we have those little points in mind, and I do hope you bear them in mind, let's take a further look into blockchains. Here we have a structure of a block and blocks are basically made up of three main things, data, hash, and the hash of the previous block. Remember, it's a chain of blocks. And so there's always going to be a previous block and a block that follows. Now let's take a look at the kind of data that is seen in a block. This is block number 434543 and I randomly searched this out on Google. You can type up any block and see all the information about the blocks that have been created so far. Here we can clearly see under the summary of the block the number of transactions, the total outputs, the estimated transaction volume, transaction fees all together, the height of the block and the main chain. You can see timestamps when it was received. You can also see the difficulty in the block creation and the number of bits, the size, the weight, the version, and the nonce. As a side note of no particular value to this video, the nonce is a number that can only be used once and it's usually assigned by the miners who mine the block. Now on the other side of the page, you can see the hash of the block, the hash of the previous block, and the hash of the next block. The reason there's a next block here is because this block was created a long time ago and there are subsequent blocks in the chain that follow it. Just to show you more transparency of the blockchain, this is a random Bitcoin transaction. Simply by having either the transaction ID or the addresses involved in the transaction, anybody can trace the information about this transaction. Here again, you can see the block summary has the size, the weight, the receive time, the number of confirmations of the block. You can also see the transaction information, the total outputs, the total input, all the fees accrued on the transaction, and the estimated amount of Bitcoin that was transferred. So taking a look at this illustration, it's as apt as it is a block with chains. So that is a blockchain. Like we've already said, each block has a previous hash. So block number three has the pre previous hash as the actual hash of block number two, the preceding block. And block number two also has as its previous hash, the hash of block number one. Now, the interesting thing to see about block number one in this situation is that block number one is the only one that has no previous hash and that's because it's the first block on the chain. So we call that the Genesis block. I thought that was a very cool name. Now this amount of transparency is actually what is great about the blockchain because all facts can be verified by anyone. Records can be stored and are safe and secure. And on the subject of security, what if someone were to try to cheat the blockchain? Why do we believe that the blockchain is foolproof? someone were to tamper with the hash of the genesis block that would then mean that the previous hash of block number two would no longer match this hash and so there will be an issue a validation error now the beautiful thing is since everybody has an open ledger to the system and everybody has access and verifies each claim that transaction is going to come up void now let's take a look at this scenario where there's a buyer and two sellers for bitcoin in this case, because of the validation and confirmation system that the blockchain operates upon, there can be no double spending in this scenario. Now the buyer and seller A have come to an agreement and the transaction has been accepted. As you can see, the blocks are all lined up and awaiting confirmation from other people on the peer-to-peer -peer network. Seller B can no longer go ahead with the transaction through a system of math that the blockchain operates with called cryptography. Cryptography is used to ensure that records can't be counterfeited by anyone 
through the system that we've explained earlier. The way this works is through something called proof of work. Take a look at the illustration we have here of a daughter who's asking her father to build her a doll's house like he promised. Now he first of all says that he wants her to run a 5k marathon and when she asks him why, he says she needs to show proof of work. In the same way, proof of work slows down the creation of new blocks, giving time for all the confirmation and validation to occur. It takes about 10 minutes to calculate the required proof of work and add a new block to the chain. This makes it hard to tamper with because if you wanted to tamper with one of them, you're going to need to recalculate the proof of work for all the following blocks. In this way, we can see that both hashing and the proof of work make up the entire security of the blockchain. Now, like we said before, blockchains store information across a network of personal computers in what's called a distributed and decentralized manner. Now, no single person owns the system and it's difficult for any single person to corrupt it. Over here, we can look at a centralized system where obviously there is one power hub and everybody is receiving information from it. In a decentralized situation here, we can see that there are subsequent hubs that no single person controls, but they're also not all connected to each other. Now, in a distributed ledger system, which is the way the blockchain works, everyone is responsible for verifying and validating the information across the network, and this makes it extremely difficult to tamper with. Blocks that are tampered with will be rejected by other nodes, meaning if you had to tamper with one block, you need to tamper with all the blocks on the chain, redo the proof of work of each block, and take control of more than 50% of the entire peer-to-peer -peer network, which is almost impossible to do. If it's not exactly clear by now what blockchains solve, I'll say it again. If you're looking for a system where facts can be verified by anyone, where records can be stored and is safe and completely secure, then you know the blockchain is right for you. And this is because everyone in the network has a full copy of the blockchain which the node uses to determine everything is valid. And when a new block is added, all the nodes check its validity and come to what's called a consensus. If there is no consensus, there is no confirmation and that transaction does not go through. This brings us to what I consider as the true power of the blockchain and is a very good segue for what I hope will be a series on blockchain technology on this channel. Smart contracts are contracts stored on the blockchain that automatically exchange coins based on fulfillment of certain conditions and agreements. The limitations of smart contracts, in my opinion, are only based on the limitations of your mind. And smart contracts can pave the way for verifying and validating taxes, votes, medical records, Pretty much anything that requires transparency, validation, and confirmation on part of its users. So now that you understand what the blockchain is, how it works, and what it can be used for, this brings us to our question of the day. If you had the right amount of funding, what would you do with the blockchain? Do let me know your thoughts and ideas in the comment section. I'd love to discuss them sometime on the channel. And if you like this kind of content, do smash the like button. Hit the subscribe button so you can catch my videos as they drop. My name is Majesty Ibianga and I'll catch you on the next drive through.